Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My uh, last video, if you remember, I showed you how I installed this uh, AC inlet uh, on my Jeep that's connected to my AC charger for my batteries. So before I closed up the floor in my Jeep, I figured I'd show you around. So we'll get back to that in a second. But first, I'll show you what I got under the hood. And we'll start with my Genesis dual battery system. It's got a whole bunch of mishmash of uh, uh, wires here. So I got the two batteries here. I have my um, 100 amp circuit breaker. This cable here is going through the firewall and into uh, the back, and I'll show you where that goes, but we won't discuss this at this moment. That's all being, uh, my batteries are first being charged by my big solar panel up on top. It's a 430 watt single solar panel, and that's being fed down to my Victron MP, MPPT 150 solar controller, which is right here. And that's also in a, I also have a Victron Energy uh, 121230 DC DC charger which is hooked up to my alternator under the hood. That's hooked up to also the uh, two batteries in the front. In my previous video, I showed you my AC inlet. I'll link the video uh, above and in the description below. But my AC line is hooked up to my AC charger, which is right here. And all of that is hooked up to my dual Battleborn heated batteries, which I have right there. My uh, dual uh, Odyssey batteries underneath the hood is, I mentioned earlier that the uh, 100 amp circuit breaker is running through this line right here, through the firewall, and that's tapped off of here. What I have uh, coming off of this is everything that the vehicle needs to run by itself. What I have hooked up to these two batteries are my house batteries and that's for all my supplemental stuff that is outside of um, what the vehicle needs to run. So I run all my ham radio gear, my heated blankets, my refrigerators, uh, my pumps for my, uh, here's my water system there. So the pumps for my water system, my water filters. So anything that I have supplemental to uh, operating my creature comforts, if you will, other than what the vehicle needs to start and stop. So if you can see underneath the floor, there's my ham radio that's sitting there. So um, these two batteries will run my heated blankets. I do have an induction cooktop. So on those uh, windy days or when I wanna cook indoors, I do use a induction cooktop instead of using propane inside, which makes it a lot safer. And then on this side here is a 1200 watt inverter that's uh, um, also a Victron 1200 watt inverter. So backing up here, here's my uh, Wii Boost. Here's the outside antenna, <coughs> inside antenna, and here's the power. And then for you uh, Ursa Minor folks, here's a 12 volt dedicated line that I ran uh, into the top directly off to the batteries so I can run my heated blankets and uh, 
and other high powered, uh, high current draw items that uh, is not run through the electric system of the top. So that's running directly to a pair of power pull connectors so I can run um, heated blankets or my laptop or anything else outside of the direct um, view system in the Ursa Minor top. So, and then to monitor this battery bank as well as the auxiliary battery and the starter battery in real time, I installed uh, three power or voltage meters up in the roof of the uh, Ursa Minor. And there, I don't know if you can see that or if they'll flicker. The voltage meter on the left is the house batteries and the voltage meter on the right the top one is my starter battery. The voltage on the bottom, or rather on the top right, is the starter. The bottom right is the auxiliary battery. So, and then the switch in the middle turns those off, so that I had don't, so I don't have any uh, 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 sporadic uh, draw. So. And that pretty much is my whole system. And the great thing about this is all the Victron uh, items, uh, they have a Bluetooth app. And uh, let me turn uh, the video off here and then I'll get back to the app here in a second because I got to pull out my second camera and uh, videotape that. By the way, if you guys are interested in my water system I'll link a video to that I did a video uh, a couple months back and uh, that's my water purifier and a 10 gallon water tank there so I'll link a I'll put a link in the description below one of the things I forgot to mention earlier is this really cool device it's called a amp L start and what this thing does is takes the uh, residual charge from my solar or uh, starter or house batteries. When the house batteries are fully charged or close to it, it takes the trickle charge from the house battery and runs it to the uh, front under the hood batteries, my auxiliary and starter batteries, and trickle charges those. So if those are slightly run down, uh, it'll allow my solar system to uh, trickle charge those, which is also, uh, which is really cool. As you can see now, it's maintaining those. So those front batteries are charged. So it's just uh, trickle charging those. So, which is also pretty cool. They're not very expensive either. About 60 or 70 bucks if I'm not uh, mistaken. So, it's really cool. Okay, I'm uh, back in the car. I got the uh, battery compartment all closed up. And I'm just going to run quickly run down all the uh, components I have in the Victron app. This is all hooked up via Bluetooth. And uh, here I'm going to start at the top. And I have a... Uh, Treetart Smart Sense, which is just a small little device that uh, provides uh, temperature and voltage to the other devices. So I'm going to click on that. And when that boots up, it just tells me the battery status. So the battery bank is 14.8 volts. And it tells me that the battery temperature is at 92 volts, which is kind of important um, because uh, as uh, you guys uh, may know um, lithium-ion batteries are very temperature sensitive so um, the uh, uh, charge voltages makes a difference um, depending on what temperature the battery bank is at so let's go back there 
I'm going to skip to the shunt and we'll get back to that last. Here's my inverter. It happens to be turned on at the moment. And I don't have anything plugged into it. Uh, that just popped up sim simply because I don't have a pin code assigned to it. So let's just turn that off. So I don't have anything plugged into the inverter. So there's no, uh, no load on it. And so it's set for 120 volt out and it's set uh, to be inverting and voltage going into it is 14.2 volts so let's go back to that and let's go down to the next one is the dc dc charger of course my engine is uh, not running but it is hooked up to my auxiliary battery which is uh, uh, underneath the hood so that battery is providing a uh, voltage to uh, the DC DC charger and I have it set up to provide a charge up until uh, the input voltage here up until that drops down to 12.2 volts so the output will continue to be 14.1 volts or so until this drops down to 12.2 and then this float will turn off and it'll be down to off. So that's how I have this set up. So my aux battery underneath the hood, which is an AGM battery will continue to charge until this drops down to 12.2 volts and then this will turn this will turn off and this whole system will stop charging and then of course you can change all these values whichever way you want so now let me see let me go back here okay now the reason why I have that set up is because you may have noticed uh, earlier that amp L start that I have that threshold is set at uh, 11.9 volts so once that uh, reaches 11.9 volts it starts beeping saying that the starter battery which it thinks is the is the uh, oops sorry is the auxiliary battery Okay, it thinks that the starter battery is starting to reach a low voltage, so it starts beeping on me. So that's why I have this set up at 12.2, so it uh, stops confusing the ampel start. So, and then if you want, uh, here's a graph, kind of give you guys an idea of uh, uh, the uh, graph of how it charges in the bulk state and the absorption state and the current status of where it's at now which is in the float state and then we go to my solar and my solar panel is now currently putting out 15 watts voltage is 42 watts putting out a current of 0.4 amps the battery is fully charged at uh, 4.2 volts uh, yeah 14.2 uh, volts and it's uh, putting out uh, uh, what one amp and it's in a absorption stage that's the uh, output of the um, solar controller let me see if I can reach back. Sorry for the shaky camera here. I'm going to open my fridge. I'm reaching back and opening my fridge. And hopefully I can get my fridge to kick in. Let's uh, see if the, I'm going to, I'm going to wait about 30 seconds to see if my fridge will kick in. And we'll show you and see if that solar controller will start to kick in and give you a uh, 
and see how that thing will kick in and start power, providing more uh, power to the uh, battery bank. Okay, you guys are seeing as soon as the compressor kicked in, there was a big draw on the battery bank and the solar controller seen the draw and it started kicking in more power from the solar panel to the battery bank. So as I mentioned I have a 400 watt panel up on the roof and it sensed what it needed and it started kicking in what it uh, what it thought it can uh, provide. So which is kind of really cool. So it'll provide what it needs and uh, and keep the battery topped off. So as soon as the compressor stops, uh, as soon as my fridge stops, it'll kick that wattage back down to that uh, that 10 or 12 watts. So it's not to overcharge the batteries, which is kind of really cool. Okay, I just closed the fridge. And uh, now let's go back. And then let me go back to the shunt now. Okay, and that shows that my battery bank is 88% charged. The fridge is running. So it's showing you the, well, my battery bank is uh, 14 volts. The current it's drawing is uh, 5 amps at 63 watts. I consumed the 34 amp hours and at that current draw, I have uh, one day remaining. So one day and nine hours. So, and then that's my starter battery right there at 12.5 volts. So, and then I can go to the history here at the top. And then that's all my uh, history settings. And then, then I can go, I can go at the uh, trends. So, and, uh, and there you go. One other item that you don't see on the list is my AC to DC charger, which I did a video on it earlier, which of course I don't have plugged in. And uh, if I did have it plugged in, it would be another product listed on the bottom. So, and there you have it. So this, uh, this whole Victron system is uh, awesome. And it's all uh, interconnected and easy to operate. Everything's uh, user selectable and switchable and settable via Bluetooth app and uh, makes it nice and system. Now I just, uh, let me go back real quick. And I just heard my fridge turn off. So let's go back to the solar controller and see what that does. Uh, just kind of show you. See, there you go. My fridge just turned off, and now the battery bank is only pulling 8 watts. So, kind of give you an idea on how that solar controller is working, which is, which is awesome. So, all right. And there you have it. There's my entire uh, electrical system, from the way the batteries are hooked up to the app and what have you. So if you have any uh, questions, comments, um, please post them in the comment section below. And uh, as always, uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.